Hi Caroline, brilliant to speak to you today. Um, so you have a new book out called Do It Like a Woman, which is a really sort of positive, life-affirming um, account of what women are capable of. Mm -hmm. um, but when I was looking into all your cuts and everything, it's a shame that there's been this alongside this incredibly empowering message, has been all this sort of stuff on the internet that you've been involved in campaigning, really positive campaigning, but also um, some darker stuff. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to start with um, how you feel the internet has helped you as a writer and as a woman and how it's been a positive thing. Um, I think Overall, the internet's been amazing for women. Um, we always focus on the negative because that's the most dramatic. Um, and yeah, what happened to me was, was pretty horrific and it was very scary getting all these rape and death threats that were very graphic and violent, um, telling me to shut up, essentially. Um, but I mean, it is kind of a, a double-edged sword, I think, because on the one hand, you do have this aspect of the internet where you get this, this group of angry men um, telling women to shut up or they're going to rape them. But on the other hand, I think it's given women permission to speak in a way that we've never had before, or I suppose in a better way of putting it would, say, would be to say it's taken away the need for permission. You can just start a blog, you can just start a Twitter account, um, and you can start writing about what you think. Um, and I'd always wanted to, I'd always wanted to write, um, but in my head I always had this idea that there would be a guy in a suit who I would have to submit my work to, yeah. um, and he would not like my work. And so I just didn't really want to go down that route. Um, and I think, that that's, I think that's the way it is for a lot of women, that we sort of feel nervous about this man who has to give us permission, this sort of monolithic man. Um, and I think the internet's been amazing for feminism overall. Um, it's really given women a really powerful voice. The campaign was just for female representation. Um, so the campaign being that um, the Bank of England were phasing out the only female banknote and it was yes. just going to be men representing our currency. Yes, yeah. so um, of the historical figures that are on banknotes, so the people who were there because they represent something great about British past, something that yeah. we're really proud of and that we want to celebrate, we're all going to be men. And so obviously that was essentially saying that only men had ever done anything Absolutely. worth celebrating. Um, so I thought that was an unnecessary decision. And uh, from my uh, work with the Women's Room, which is an organisation um, that I co-founded uh, to get more female experts in the media. Um, I've been looking into role model research and what a difference it makes to women to see women in the world around them. Mm. Um, so because I sort of had this in my head already, this, this news report about yet another area where women were going to be scrubbed out of history, yet another woman that was going to be taken away as a role model, I just, it, I just thought it was ridiculous and needed to be challenged. I mean, it's quite a benign request. Yes. And, I mean, you know, it's not an aggressive request. Yeah. It's not even born from fury, is it? Mm. It's sort of saying, hey, hang on a minute, this yeah. is our national currency. Well, to be honest, I didn't even expect to have to fight very much for it. No, I, sure. I thought it was such an obvious point that they would say, actually, yeah, fair enough, okay, well, we'll, we'll do something about this. Um, because so much of feminism is the feeling that nobody's really noticed, that yeah. nobody, you know, yeah. that somebody and just I'm needs sure their attention drawn. That it, it just hadn't occurred to them. But for some reason, they really dug their heels in and it became this really big thing. Um, and, yeah, I mean, the reaction that I got for it was, was really quite astounding when you think of it in that context of I was asking for a woman on a piece of paper. Yeah. Um, and the reaction was this huge tidal wave of rape and death threats. Um, and I, I, I mean, I sort of, it's almost amusing in a way, because, you know, women are always called irrational and over-emotional. And I mean, really, if anyone's irrational and over-emotional, it's someone who feels the need to send a rape threat to a woman who wanted a woman on a banknote, you know. Things like everyday sexism, do, is that an example for you of where Twitter can really take sexism and misogyny mm -hmm. and give it a more positive platform? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and, and I think, again, it's that women are being able to use this platform to talk about their lives because the mainstream media doesn't give us that platform. You know, 78% of news stories are about men. So people weren't really talking about this before. Um, and certainly I know that a lot of men um, have said to Laura and have also said to me that everyday sexism really opened their eyes yeah. to a whole experience that they just had no idea about because no one was talking about it. Um, and that's, that, you know, that's really what I think is so amazing about the internet for women, is that it enables us to say, fine, you're not going to talk about our lives, we'll talk about our lives and we'll talk about them here. Um, and 
as a result, now the mainstream media is talking about it. So, um, yeah, I think the internet is, is an incredibly powerful tool for women.